I'm Mike Frankton, welcome back to my shop, aka The Boardroom. In this video I'm going to install some geometric wall paneling. Here's my starting point, a SketchUp drawing. The wall's about 25 feet wide by about 8 feet tall, and that door leads into a gym. And I ordered up some 12 foot lumber since some of the strips will be a little over 10 feet long. And I get in gear and start milling this lumber down into half inch thick by 2 inch wide strips. If you're looking at this project and thinking to yourself, uh, this is way far outside of the normal work that Mike does, I would agree with you. And I think that's what I like most about being a custom woodworker. I'm constantly challenged with new and different designs. This is a project I never would have come up with on my own. I think it's a really neat design, but it's not something I could have pulled out of the left side of my brain. But a customer approached me with a couple of pictures, and they asked if I could adapt this design to their space. I took a look at the pictures, and I said, absolutely. And by the way, that's standard operating procedure for how most of my projects get started. A customer will approach me with a picture, and they'll ask if I can build this to fit their space. More often than not, they'll ask me to make a change here, add one of these, take away this, and so on, to the point where it looks nothing like the original picture. But the starting point of the picture is a place where I never would have gotten to. And I love that. It gets me out of my comfort zone and allows me to build a huge variety of projects. I'm sure you've all heard the axiom variety is the spice of life. In my case, variety is the spice of a happy and interesting career. I never wanted to be the guy with a style, necessarily. I don't want to be the guy that you call when you want your farmhouse kitchen built. I would love to build a farmhouse style kitchen. I just don't want to be pigeonholed and find myself in a position that that's all that I do. I want to build all types of projects in all types of design styles. I think I put myself in this position because I'm not really exactly sure what I like. I don't know what my style is. I like modern designs. I like traditional designs. I like a lot of stuff. I think subconsciously I enjoy building in all these different styles because it's helping me define who I am and what my tastes are. That's a really rewarding way to meander through the odd business of woodworking. Definitely keeps it interesting. I'm sure I could make better money specializing in a particular product or style, but that would be boring. first half of this job entailed quite a bit of milling, and because I like my neighbors and I want to stay in their good graces, I bag all of my chips and dust. So after I mill everything up, I sand everything, and I put a coat of primer on, it's time to load up and head over to the job site. And this is my process to ensure I don't forget any tools. I take the tools off the shelf and I set them behind my van and as I'm doing that I'm walking through the job in my head. Minus a few tools like a job site table saw, this is pretty much the tool set that I take to any on-site work. Since this is a project of 90 degree angles and 45 degree angles, I cut out a couple of triangles to help with layout. And I get started by marking a few key measurements on the wall where I know I want certain pieces to be. And next I mark the location of all the studs. And I use a magnetic stud finder to do so. It grabs on to the head of the steel nail or screw that was used to attach the drywall to the stud.
And once the first five or six pieces were in place, most of the hard work was done and it was just a matter of cutting and fitting the rest of the smaller pieces. To hold the pieces onto the wall, I'm using a combination of an 18 gauge brad nailer and construction adhesive. And I put a thin bead on the back of each piece, but I also add a little bit to any place where two pieces of wood are joining. And here's the first of a series of pro tips. Put your caulking gun with your construction adhesive in a five gallon bucket, tip down. This will ensure that any little dribblings that come out of the end of the caulking gun won't land on your customer's newly installed flooring. And of course, the five gallon bucket plays double duty and acts as a perfect job site trash can. I worked as hard as I could to keep the joints as flat as possible, but once in a while I would use a shim to make the pieces more coplanar. Anytime I'm tackling a project like this, I always have noise-canceling earbuds in because I'm trying to lose as little hearing as possible. But through those noise-canceling earbuds, I'm usually playing a variety of music, podcasts, books on tape, etc. In this case, when I was rocking out listening to some music, a song by the Counting Crows came on. It's titled Rain King, and it's off their album August and Everything After. I think it's a great song, and I think you should give it a listen. And normally after a while of listening to music, I get tired of that and need a switch, and I'll jump over to some podcasts. And three of the podcasts that I like to listen to that are woodworking related are the Woodworkers Podcast, the Against the Grain Podcast, and Shop Talk Live, which is Fine Woodworking's Podcast. And I would be interested to hear what your favorite woodworking podcasts are as well. I'm always looking for something new and interesting to listen to. So if you feel like sharing, put your selections in the comment section below. And if my head looks shinier than normal in this shot, I was sweating a bit. I was working real hard to try and get these last couple of pieces installed before one of our massive afternoon thunder showers blew in. After all the pieces are nailed in place, I turn my attention to prep, and I like to start with caulking. And in my opinion, when installing painted moldings or any mill work, this isn't an optional step. I think this is absolutely necessary if you want the end result to look nice and professional. On to the second and penultimate pro tip for this video. A two and a half gallon bucket with some water and a rag is a perfect helper when doing caulking and prep work. As a side benefit, tubes of caulking fit in here and you can click the lid in place. This prevents the tube of caulking from drying out and it also prevents the bucket from spilling in the back of your van or truck. A couple of the joints that I put together were not up to the normal spectacular Mike Farrington standards, so I busted out the block plane to help flush out a couple of the joints, and in some cases I used a sanding block. All of the nail holes and joints received a coat of filler just to cover up any cracks that could potentially be there. And anytime I'm using filler, I like to put it on a little heavy, let it dry, and come back and sand it. I've found this gives the best results. And for the third and final pro tip, and one I could use to learn myself, and that is buy smaller amounts of filler and glue. I always buy the larger can thinking I'm saving money, and I end up throwing half of it away. After I'm done applying filler, I head out for lunch to my local sandwich shop that is named after a common underground form of transportation, and I devour a foot-long turkey sandwich, then I come back for final sanding and paint.
And let's close it out with a few beauty shots. And if the sheen of the paint looks inconsistent, that's because it is soaking wet as I'm taking these final shots. Overall, I'm happy with the end results. I think the customer was very happy as well, and this was a real fun and interesting project to tackle. Till next time, thanks for watching.